In this video, we're going to show the Market Center leadership and the MCAs how to create your templates in DocuSign to then share with the Market Center. First thing is you want to make sure inside of the MCAs account, you're going to come to settings and you're going to come to the Cloud More settings and DocuSign settings. Here, I had to create a Market Center group. So if you haven't done yours yet, you just check the box. It gives you a name and then that is now connected. You can't undo it or redo it. So it's just a group. It already have your name there. You just connect that first. So we're going to go to DocuSign now and I'm going to log in as the MCA's account as we're working on this together here and want to make sure we show this. So here is the Market Center account. Now, this is where you had to come and do admin to get your documents in order. Now we need to go to a different section for templates. So you actually are going to click your profile in the KLRW account and switch to the e-signature system. Now, this might make you log in again like this is doing for me. And that's the part of DocuSign we need to get to to create the template. So we'll enter our password. So we're logging into DocuSign and you're going to notice it switches to the DocuSign e-signature part. I'm still in the KLRW account. Here I am and I'm going to go to templates. Now I've already done some of these and I'm going to show you how you can do your own. So we're going to come here and say new create template. That's the first thing you're going to do. So when we create a template, you're going to give it a name. So I've already got some documents I got from Dotloop. And honestly, we just put these side by side with each other. So let's say for this one, it is simply a KWFTL. I've already got this form, but KWFTL buyer disclosure for the market center. You can give a description if you want. This is the description. And I'm going to come here to upload and add the documents. So I've already got the documents here under downloads. I was just downloading these from Dotloop today. And we're going to use, uh, I don't want those ones. Here we go. There we go. Buyer tenant disclosure form. So we're going to add this one to it. So this is where you're going to add the form. So what you're doing is for the templates, you're creating an envelope that they can then access in their templates inside of command. So here is add documents. You can add the signer here. So this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to view this form and I need to have a box for the buyer tenant. Um, we're not going to do buyer and tenant. The system won't work like that. So I'm going to create a version of this form for the buyer and a separate version of the template for the tenant so I can assign those roles. So we're going to leave it here and I'm going to go ahead and say the role is buyer one. You spell it out. Add recipient and you want buyer two. If I had the agent there, I'd add that. So just the same way the agent adds those roles, if the words match, then they won't have an issue in the DocuSign system when it goes to the agent. So here I've got them both set to sign. I don't have to do a message down below, but I can if I want to. In my testing, this didn't actually go anywhere, so I just left it alone. We're going to click next and that takes you to the actual signature boxes. So here is the section for buyer one and buyer two. This is actually the same exact process the agents do of their own template creation. So here on this form, I know I need a box for buyer initial, so I'm going to stick with buyer one, and I'm going to add the initial box here. Best practice is get this line on the line and resize it to fit, and you will have a good signature that fits the box there. So I've got signature one. By the way, on the right, you can make this required or not required if it's an optional thing. So I've got that field. I'm going to scroll down. We also need the name and a date. So I'm going to add a signature here. So this is the form for buyer one. I'm going to fit it to my box. That's there. And then I'm going to say date signed and it will automatically add a date and timestamp here as long as I have that. In the event it was something I needed to add a box to or a name field, I can just type here name. And when it actually goes to the contract, it'll auto add their name. Same thing with the text boxes. So you're able to come in here create this. When I was testing this around, I found if it's just a box you want to fill in, you can also say, hey, how about we, the agent, fill it in? And then if you check it for read only, it means the agent will pre-fill this box and the consumer is just going to read it. That's a trick I learned. So I'm just going to delete that one. And there's some options in here. I think you can get some more help around this with the actual DocuSign help because that is their part of how the signature part works. So that was buyer one. Now I'm gonna come here and do buyer two. So I've got my initial box, same thing. Put it here in the square. Notice it auto-sized it to match. 
Another cool trick, if you copy this with your keyboard shortcut and paste it, you can do that. I also can copy it here and go to another page and it will add it in that exact spot, which is great for those really long contracts. So now I'm at the bottom section. We're going to add a signature box here as well and a date sign. So now this form is done. I've got my initial box for buyer one and buyer two. I've got my signing for buyer one, buyer two, and my date sign for buyer one, buyer two. I can also come to recipient preview and see what they're going to look at. So if you want to make sure you did it right or what are they going to see, this is under buyer one right now. I'll click start and this will show me, hey, buyer two, click here and click there. Notice it will be the signature box like this and there is your date and timestamp and it will add the initial box there. This is just a preview. You're not actually signing anything. Do the same thing with buyer one. So I'd recommend on some of your more complex forms, you might wanna come in here and just verify or have someone double check. Did we fill out all the boxes correctly? Does it have everything it needs? So this one does. I'm gonna say save and close. And now it is a template for me to use. So this is the one I just did here. It is 6.38 p.m. my time, so this is the new one. When I'm ready to share this individual, I can come here to the right and do share with users. I also have a shared folder down here, so I can create a folder. Uh, that's gonna get in the way, hold on. Let me move this real quick. Share folder, there we go. And I created one for the office forms, and I put it in here. Now in my testing of this, I haven't seen the folder come over, yet this is technically how you can do the folders there. So here it is, this is a test one I'm doing with another person. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my templates now, and I can just drag this over here, and it will add that form. So there it is, here's the one we just added. And from here, I could take this folder and share it. And remember we created those groups, so if you come to groups, you will have your Market Center group in the list. So we've got our Market Center group, I've already got it selected for 7-Eleven. And that means when an agent creates an envelope and goes to templates, they will see it under the shared with me section. And that should be how it works. We're working out some kinks now. If you have issues, let us know. We will get that corrected and contact the right people for that. And that's how you create a template. So if this is something more complex, like an actual contract, let me pull up uh, another example. I'm gonna say new create template and I'm gonna create something more complex. So I'll call this one test just to show you. And I'm gonna upload, let's say something more robust like the actual rental application. Now this would be a renter, but just to show you all the different fields you can do, there's a lot of tools in here. So I'm not gonna do anything, but just add that. I'm gonna say we need tenant one, add recipient tenant two, there's some quirks with figuring this all out and we're gonna go to next. So the goal is, what if I had a really complex form? Like everything in the contract. If your contracts aren't coming into your agent's forms yet, this template method could be a workaround for now until DocuSign gets everything in. So let's say it was something more robust like this. I've gotta add every box and fill everything in. So in this example, what would I need? I've got my two people, tenant one, tenant two. If you need to have an agent, you'd add your agent. You know, anybody you need in that role, you can come here. And you can always come back and fix anything and change it if, if it's wrong or you need to correct it or do something differently. So let's say it's tenant one and I want to add a text box. Great. I'll say the text. Here is the address. You know what? I want the agent to fill that in so they don't have to do it every time. Here's my advice for that. Required, uncheck, and make it read only, meaning tenant one will see it and the agent can actually come here and type in what the address is. So that's the first trick I found. So that would be an example of that. Then I need to add the date, so why not use date signed? It would be a date field here, or I can add my own date field or text field or checkbox, drop down, anything you want to add here on the left. So these are just some ways here. You've even got some formulas if you need to have some stuff for calculations and adding things in. That's a little more complex than I want to go into today. So I've got my options here. I can fill in those text fields. Um, I also found if I wanted this same concept, maybe I want to have the length of the lease. I'm going to copy, paste, move it up shrink this down and it has the same permission, meaning the agent is going to fill this in and the tenant one can only read it. I can add text here. You can do your formatting, give it a label if you need to, tool tips, all kinds of different things here. Validation if you need one, like social security, phone numbers, email addresses, things like that. Notice there is social 
security number on here. So I could say, hey, let's add a text box there. And let's do that. Let's come down to this validation and choose SSN. So it'll match the social security number. Date of birth, that's another one. I can add a text box here, shrink this down a little bit, and I can come over to the right and do validation of do date. So now it will require a date there of month dash date dash year. So that's some options that I can do as well. Name, I've got their name, so if I have their name already, I can just pop full name there and it auto fills it for them or leave it for them to fill it in, it's your choice. I've already got their stuff, license number, that would be another one, I'll just leave it as a text box, right? You can kind of see what we're doing here to build this out. Let's go to something with signatures. So here's one where I have to do a bunch of initials and signatures, so here's my advice. Initial one, here, it's a little too big, I'm gonna shrink this and center that one there. Now I'm gonna copy it, paste it, and put it down here. Copy paste with my keyboard shortcuts, copy, paste. This is great. By the way, you also can select them all, copy, paste, and make it its own second column if you needed to. That would be an option technically. I think I could do this tenant two. There we go, that's even better. So there's the same option for tenant two. Here's the one for option tenant one. I love that, that's nice and easy. Signature boxes, I will add one here. I will add the name field here. And I will add our date signed. Here's the cool thing. I'll do the same thing, highlight these three, copy, paste, put it down here, and I'm gonna do the same thing, such as the tenant one. So the more I'm playing, the easier it's getting. So I just did that entire section as something that we could do with it. So that's really cool. And then when you're ready, you can go recipient preview and let's see what they're gonna get. So tenant one, here's your example. You're gonna come in and look, you can fill this in, it's required. So what is your birthday? I love that. So I can just say, hey, maybe it's this date and I can fix it so it needs to be in that form, 1990, something like that. What's your license number? One, two, three, four, five. So security number, six, six, five, seven, eight, eight, nine, two. And it's going to say invalid number, remember the authorization. So that's a great way to invalid format. Dash seven A dash eight 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 A. And now it's required, it matches. Remember, we have our signature box at the bottom. I can come down here, initial, 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 sign, full name, date, and timestamp. That's the preview. Once you're done, same thing, save and close, and then it's available for everybody. And again, I could take this test folder, come to my templates, drag it down to test, and make sure this folder is shared with everybody in my group, which I already have it done. And that's how they'll be able to access it. When they go into command, they'll have it under shared template here. And when they create an envelope, they'll have the ability to do it there. Thanks for watching. Hope this gave you more in depth on what to do in setting this up. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, follow me on KB Connect or YouTube today.